So good morning and uh, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Victor uh, Otieno, uh, Managing Director of V4 Consult. Um, so today we are as part of our commercialization, um, IP commercialization series. We have today and we are privileged to have um, uh, Dr. Muthike, uh, who is a Deputy Director of Forest Products and Entrepreneurship Development at uh, the Kenya Forest Research Institute. Uh, who's going to give us a presentation um, around what KFRI does, what opportunities are there within forest products, and possibly maybe we can have uh, I can lead a Q and A um, around um, areas of collaboration and areas of opportunity. So, without further much ado, I would uh, uh, allow Dr. Mudike to take it up. Karib. Thank you very much, Victor. Um, Me. Very mm -hmm. needs to take you uh, some of the things free down uh, top introduce him. My research head. The the but uh, and uh, end up. Your connection is not as good. Um, Can you can continue? Yeah, you can continue. You're just you're just breaking a bit. So, okay, okay, okay. Then uh, give me the next slide. Okay, now you're a bit clear. Yes. What you do is uh, just yes. Uh, just the first uh, before this slide, the 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 yes, this one. Yes. That is the Kefri headquarters. Uh, the head office. That's where uh, we sit. But uh, basically, the forest products. And, uh, you know, Forest Products Research Program is based at uh, Karura. This headquarters is at uh, the, the Muguga area that is near Kikuyu. Uh, next slide. So, uh, Kenya Forestry Research Institute, uh, established in 1986 under the Science and Technology Act, uh, CAP 250, which was revised in 2009 and amended uh, in the Science, Technology, and Innovation Act, number 28 of 2013. We have a vision uh, to be a world-class uh, center of excellence in uh, forestry and allied uh, natural resources research for sustainable development. Our mandate is to undertake research and uh, development in forestry and allied natural resources. The mission of the Institute is to conduct, uh, to conduct research uh, in order to provide uh, information and technologies for sustainable development of forestry and uh, allied natural uh, resources, so as to enable socioeconomic development. And our major role is basically to provide scientific uh, information for management and conservation and the protection of, it, of the environment and the forestry. So um, when you look at uh, our next um, slide, it, it talks about the functions. And generally, uh, as I've explained, uh, our general um, mandate is to generate uh, forestry technologies and innovations. And this is through research uh, and experiences so that uh, we can enable management. And I want to, uh, pause there and just um, point out that um, quite a number of people have uh, asked us issues to do with management of our forests. Uh, we as a research institution, we are not involved so much into management of forest uh, or conservation in this country. That is the work of uh, our sister organizations, uh, particularly Kenya Forest Service. Ours is to develop the technologies and the information that is needed to enable uh, sustainable management, 
conservation, restoration of all types of forests, including uh, farm forestry, uh, dryland forestry, and all sorts of uh, forestry. We also stretch into the utilization of forest products, and that is why we have the forest products uh, research program and a whole thematic area added by a deputy forest products and uh, uh, entrepreneurship development. We also do first building uh, targeting uh, as an expert area or as a profession. We also do dissemination of uh, the research findings that we develop. And this is now to support our stakeholders in the management of forestry and the utilization of forest products. We also establish partnerships. And that is how um, Victor has come in and together with other, a few other institutions, we establish partnerships, cooperations with uh, other organizations uh, who have uh, similar aspirations like ours. And we also do participation in development and the monitoring of national forest uh, standards. We happen to sit in a number of uh, standards technical committee at the Kenya um, uh, Bureau of Standards because uh, we believe that we have uh, the information that is required together with other stakeholders to make standards in forestry and forest products for this country. KEFRI is itself is ISO 14001, 2015, and uh, ISO 9001, uh, 2015 certified. Um, if we look at the KEFRI research coordination, that is the next slide. Um, we are divided into several thematic areas. KEFRI undertakes forestry productivity and improvement. Uh, that is aimed at increasing for uh, productivity of various types of forests. That is a whole thematic area <coughs> headed by a deputy director. We also have the forest diversity, uh, biodiversity and environmental management. We have the forest products and uh, entrepreneurship development. That's what we are discussing today. We also have the social economic policy and the governance. And we also do, rather, we have um, a program that is called uh, Forest Research Support Services. We I hope I've not uh, been disconnected. You're back now. Okay. The other one is uh, we also have the corporate affairs and the quality assurance. Uh, this is uh, based at the director's office and uh, it is uh, what we call, um, it is what now coordinates issues of uh, publicity and the quality assurance okay. of all the work that we do. The carefree research implementation is basically done at a uh, regional level. You go to the next slide. Yes, thank you. Um, here we are distributed uh, around the country in all the uh, sub-regions, or rather in all regions. We have the Central Highlands. We have the Rift Valley, uh, uh, Rift Valley uh, Highland Eco Region. We have the Lake, Reg uh, Lake Basin. And we have the coastal region. We also have the drylands. And uh, finally, we have the National Forest Products Research Program. This is based at Karura in Nairobi, and it cuts across. The, the activities that happen there is it cuts across all the other res, uh, forestry research areas because it deals with the apex of uh, forestry research, and that is generally the, the forest products. Now, allow me to move into the forest products and the entrepreneurship development itself. And here we are saying that uh, the thematic area contributes to sustainable forest management through development and the promotion of efficient technologies 
for harvesting, processing, and utilization of uh, forest products. We also do evaluation of new methods of uh, using uh, wood in construction, engineering, building, and construction. We also do reconstitution of uh, wood by our uh, biomaterials, by our plastic, energy products, and by our chemicals. And we are also involved in nature-based uh, non-timber forest products. All right. Now, all these are meant to enhance investment and wealth creation through skill development and the products and marketing through capacity development and also incubation. Now, when you look at the whole arrangement of uh, the, the, the forest products and the entrepreneurship development, you find that the last bullet uh, that is enhancing investment and the wealth creation through skill development, product uh, development and the marketing, and also developing capacity of uh, those who are investing and incubation. This is a major um, uh, part of uh, this particular department. This is where we are able to work, particularly in the incubation. We are trying to get to a level where we can be able to work with an investor to ensure that they have a product on the shelves. Now, let's, let's look at uh, the development agenda uh, based on this um, uh, research program. We address challenges facing timber and non-timber forest products through uh, research and development. And uh, our areas of uh, specialization is uh, one, timber and bamboo processing and utilization, bio, uh, biomass energy, that is uh, energy derived from uh, biomaterials, the nature-based uh, forest products. Here we are involved in uh, what we call bioprospecting and the product development. And we also do products and technology incubation, as I've mentioned. Now, the research, all the research on the forest products uh, thematic area is majorly implemented under the forest products program that is in Karura. But we also have staff in all the other regions. And these, these ones, particularly, they help us to pick uh, the research agenda in those particular regions. And we also uh, enhance their capacity so that uh, in areas that they are not able to handle, then we backstop them uh, from our staff in Karura. The next slide will give you a, a fair uh, look at uh, the situation on uh, uh, wood products, particularly the supply and demand status. And um, this is data that is available in um, a number of uh, documents. There's a projection that uh, by the time we get to 2032, just ab about 10 years from now, will be uh, 20%. Project a deficit of about uh, 12 uh, million cubic meters. And we are standing at around 10 or 11. And uh, this is not a very good uh, picture of the country. And that is why we are emphasizing on issues of efficiency, issues of di diversification, issues of uh, developing new products, issues of using agricultural um, uh, residues to make uh, products that uh, mimic uh, what wood can, uh, can produce. So looking at these figures, we begin to see where um, opportunities are because uh, sometimes when you look at the figures and we are seeing deficits and uh, this kind of figure, for economies, it, it sounds not a very good picture, but uh, generally, we need to see opportunities in this. For example, when we are saying that uh, charcoal will have a deficit of about eight cubic, uh, eight, eight million uh, you know, cubic meters of wood for charcoal. Firewood will have a deficit of about five um, million. What are we saying? We, we are saying that uh, 
we have opportunities there in the sense that we can look for other products that can uh, can replace this or um, we look at uh, ways of making the use of firewood and charcoal more efficient so that um, then we do not uh, continue uh, building on this deficit. As we do that, if we are lo looking at efficiency, then we also need to look at uh, how does that affect our environment? Uh, how are we contributing to environmental conservation? How are we contributing to lessening the, the emissions and so forth and so on? So uh, moving on to the next, um, I want to look at uh, the Kenyan status of woodworks and the furniture sector. This is a very important uh, sector in this country because Kenya is the largest market and the producer of furniture in East Africa. We are well placed to expand our sales in local and regional markets. And mostly uh, looking at the diversity, we are, uh, we are, we are, I mean, the, the, the sector, the, 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 the furniture sector is able to support quite a number of people. Um, we are looking at uh, data showing 160,000 small scale units, employing five to 10 employees and consuming about 77, thousand cubic meters of timber every year. Now, this sector would include furniture, prefabricated housing, knocked down furniture, part making, as well as truss uh, rafting. Our housing require a lot of wood. And these are areas where we need to look at uh, opportunities of uh, you know getting people employed, getting people trade, getting people provide um, solutions to, to these needs. And uh, you can see the figures in terms of what is all this worth of. But shortage of uh, country is becoming a key embedment. And why is this? We are seeing that from a holistic point of view, that uh, for quite some time, the forestry uh, sector in this country has suffered. We all know there has been a continuous moratorium. We had the 1999 to 2012 moratorium. Then we now have the 2018 to to date. These moratoriums, people as uh, just um, stopping people from um, accessing materials from, uh, from the forest. But it also comes with uh, several other uh, issues. For example, our plantations, so that uh, our forest plantations, for them to be able to give us quality wood, we need to understand that there are things that need to be done to those trees. There's the issue of thinning. Now, thinning is actually extraction. You have to remove wood from the forest. When there is a moratorium, that cannot happen. And what, what is the result? We end up having plantations which are not treated civil culturally, and therefore we end up now with very low quality uh, timber, which may not be uh, deployed in spe uh, specific areas, particularly in furniture and even trust development. That is why we are seeing a lot of timber coming from our neighboring countries, Tanzania, Uganda. And right now, even uh, when the government has now partially lifted the, the ban and the people are able to get back to the forest, what they are producing, what our sawmillers are producing, to some extent is not able to compete with what is coming from other countries because Tanzania and Uganda and other countries who are supplying us with the timber, they have been able to treat their, their plantation wood. So this is an area that um, needs to be really discussed. And uh, we, we invite a lot of discussion uh, between uh, not only the government, but also uh, other stakeholders because this is an area that we feel as researchers. It is an area that needs a proper understanding so that even though there could be a moratorium because a moratorium can be uh, brought in because of uh, a few things that need to be corrected. But what we are saying is, if moratoriums come, then we need to have these moratoriums coming with some boundaries so that uh, some of these practices are not uh, stopped. Going forward, um, this picture, I just wanted to give uh, a view of um, 
looking at forest products at the center, what, uh, what, what drives this uh, area of forest products and what interventions are available. And you can see on the left-hand side, we have the stable political and legislative and economic environment. I think that is, that is now the government uh, to provide. We have good governance. This is an area where everybody is involved, including those who are managing our forests, those who are managing our business uh, entities. We have up there, we have the production. That's what I've just talked about. Uh, what kind of uh, quality of wood are we producing? And to the right, we have two areas which are very important for researchers, as including the, the, plan, uh, the production. And we are saying that uh, in a production, conversion efficiency and a value addition, we can have very, very key interventions through research and development. We need to look at wood properties and engineering uh, aspects. Uh, when we talk about wood properties, we are basically talking about the basic science of uh, forest to materials, forest to wood. Uh, we need to understand that. Um, yeah, ju just to jog our minds, and uh, forest product uh, uh, properties is something we call uh, wood anatomy. Wood anatomy is basically just like uh, human anatomy in human, uh, you know, medicine or animal anatomy in uh, animal medicine. This is the basic uh, science that informs how our wood looks like and therefore how it needs to be treated. If we are looking at conversion efficiency, if we are looking at value addition, we need to understand uh, all this. Then we have uh, what we call technology development and adoption. And this is where now the whole issue of who are investing. What are the technologies that are available? Are we able to get technologies from elsewhere? How are we adopting those technologies to suit our situations? Because globally, and I've had the, 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 the privilege of uh, being in quite a number of countries, uh, technologies out there are quite advanced. Some of them, if you bring them here, our people may not be able to operate them. But then we are not saying that they shouldn't come. These kind of technologies need to come, but we need to have a way of adopting, adopting these technologies, mimicking them or uh, optimizing them to suit our, our situation. So these are research interventions, and that is some, these are some of the issues that we are handling under forest products uh, development so that we are able to facilitate uh, investors in this country and elsewhere to trade and, uh, and make business in uh, forest products. Um, very quickly, the common sources of utility timber in Kenya, we have the hardwoods. Uh, generally in Kenya, we don't have a lot of hardwoods to harvest because uh, most of our hardwoods are found in uh, natural forests, which are protected but we import a lot from DRC, Uganda, South, uh, Southern Sudan and elsewhere. We also have farms which, uh, you know, people, private people have planted their own uh, hardwoods. We also have the drylands now. For many years, drylands had not been seen as a producer of wood, but through research, Kefri has been able to work on uh, one species called the Melia vokensai, which is now being into plantations, and this is a very good uh, species equivalent to the mahogany from uh, DRC. And we are seeing uh, from now going going forward, there is now a material coming from uh, drylands. We have started seeing a melia uh, timber appearing in the market, and this is a very good uh, uh, story, particularly for those who want to invest in furniture and other other products. We also have illegal sources. Of course, uh, when we say that uh, hardwoods are protected, there are those who still feel that uh, they can access and they have tried, but I, I'm not uh, promoting that because I'm aware that KFS has uh, added to their protection and team and uh, things are not as very good for anybody who would want to access materials illegally in the forest. Number two, we have the softwoods. These are basically Generally, the biggest percentage is uh, coming from state forest plantations. 
We also have private farms and the tea estates who are also producing a lot of softwood uh, uh, wood. And we also have illegal uh, sources. You, you would wonder why I keep on uh, repeating this because uh, even when we had the moratorium, we were still getting a lot of, uh, you know, timber coming in the market. And uh, this is coming from illegal sources, but uh, fortunately enough, these illegalities are now going down because of uh, changes that have been put by government, particularly through the Kenya Forest Service. We also have another source of uh, utility timber, and that is the reconstitution boards, reconstituted boards. Uh, this is, of course, coming from uh, materials, the raw materials, again, coming from state for, uh, forest plantations and other, other sources. Going forward, we want to look at factors affecting timber use as an industrial material. For anybody wanting to use timber, and I'm, I'm highlighting these things because they are very, very key when we are talking about uh, trading in timber products. One needs to consider issues of growth mechanisms. This, this of course, are more for researchers and uh, academicians, but getting information and uh, you know issues to do with this help the, 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 the investors to, to understand how to tackle uh, wood and what kind of technologies they need to bring in. Under growth mechanisms, we are looking at wood grain direction, issues of growth stresses. <clears throat> Many of us have uh, come across this species called the eucalyptus. And then we keep on saying that eucalyptus, you know, bends when you saw it into timber, it will bend, it will warp, it will split. All these are because of what we call uh, growth stresses. So we need to know how do we, how do we treat it? How do we handle it so that we minimize those losses? Then we have what we call reaction wood. Uh, that's knots and bends, uh, ground um, terrain, and wind strength will affect this. We have uh, the effects of edge on physical and mechanical. When you uh, leave a tree beyond its maturity edge, wood normally starts deteriorating and you may have uh, the quality uh, become uh, worse. The other factor to consider in wood is uh, water or moisture uptake, retention and loss mechanisms. We have what we call seasoning. I know from uh, a layman's point of view, uh, we, we, we know wood drying. Many of our, uh, particularly Juakali operators would, uh, would want to work with the wood that has not been dried. And you would be expecting what we call seasoning defects like splits, cracks, distortions, and so forth and so on. And then we have uh, the issue of durability. This is the ability of wood to uh, resist against uh, wood worms and the termites and the fungus and so forth and so on. How durable can our wood be in, uh, in use? So going forward, we look at uh, timber different. Could you have economic importance? Mm. Generally, here we, there are so many, That's but the most important is yeah. because uh, when you are using timber, you, you, you want to look at uh, uh, timber, uh, how knotty is it? This is, of course, because of branching. We're also looking at machining and other mechanical defects, spiral grain, weighing. And splits. The, 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 the list is, too, uh, is quite large, but the most important is uh, considering you want to use timber for some purpose. There is the issue of aesthetics, and there is also the issue of uh, you know strength, the issue of uh, how it does it um, take in glue and uh, you know varnishes so that you end up with good uh, products. Challenges in timber sector. The next slide, please. Investors have uh, sounded uh, a number of uh, challenges in uh, timber sector. One is shortage. I think we have discussed that, uh, which of course brings in uh, high, high prices, a lot of imports. And when we are talking about imports, what it brings in the economy is uh, imbalance. We end up spending uh, more money 
buying materials that we can be able to you know produce locally uh we also use we also have what we call the use of juvenile materials that is uh, immature materials that has been uh, observed particularly during the moratorium uh, farmers would uh, want would sell uh, very young trees to people because they are looking for timber then we have a serious issue with the non adherence to set standards these of course compromise standards in the processing of materials, also quality. And that's why uh, some of our products, particularly furniture and so forth and so on, we are unable to compete with the imports because of this kind of uh, non-compliance with the standards. Looking at uh, those photos there, you are seeing um, those things that are looking like uh, beehives. These are poles the electricity transmission poles uh, that have been removed from uh, lines because they have been uh, eaten up by, by termites. And basically, this is uh, an issue of uh, whoever treated this wood did not comply to some uh, set standards which would have uh, meant that the wood is properly treated and it could be retained on the power line for a longer period of time. I want to surprise you that um, we are having, today we are having our power lines changed at between five years and 10 years. When I was young, I used to see power lines that were there for as long as we were there. My wood science tells me a properly treated pole would, as, uh, would be in use for 30 years. Now, if we are replacing our power lines at uh, five years intervals, what does that mean to our economy? One of these poles, Kenya Power will charge about um, will buy from uh, the, the, the treaters at around 10,000 each. They will charge you when they are connecting you with the power, they will charge you 30,000. Now, of course, when they come to replace, they will not charge you, but it still affects our economy because, because we are spending more to actually pay for our own misconduct, if I may use that. So, we are talking about costly technology replacement. Our technology is helping us, and if they are helping us, are we adhering to the standards? Then the other thing is uh, inflated uh, service charges as power connections. I've just talked about that. And these are coming because of some of the things that uh, as entrepreneurs, we are not really doing what we need to do. Looking at the last picture. This is a picture I took from a, a project that was going on in uh, one part of this country. I wouldn't want to mention that uh, because of uh, business, of course, issues. But look at that door. That's a door made of mahogany. But somebody makes a door using mahogany, which is a hardwood, and which is not dried. Then you end up with this kind of finishing. Now, of course, you install uh, when the project is evaluated, then you are told to remove. As an entrepreneur, you go to a loss. As a country, we go to a loss. So these are some of the things when we are talking about in a business incubation. We like taking uh, people who we are working with to understand not just the issue of having good uh, products, but what that means to our economy. A few interventions we have put in place from our science. Uh, the next slide. We have looked at, uh, I talked about issues of efficient uh, uh, processing of uh, wood materials, particularly on our farms. We have uh, developed a number of technologies. One, what we call the framed chainsaw. This is a, a system that is meant to improve the recovery uh, it's a small scale system that farmers can use out there. And what drove us to develop this was uh, when we saw our farmers using the power source to process their timber. And then you get timber in the market, which is irregular in shape. Uh, also, dimensions are not uniform. So we developed this uh, frame, which is now attached to the power source. And uh, it gives you timber equivalent to what you would get from a normal sawmill. 
Uh, there are so many other, quite a number of other uh, interventions that have come in this area. I wouldn't want to really go into, but I just want to point out that um, through research and development, a number of things have uh, you know, been improved in particularly sowing of timber in this country. In the commercial uh, level, we have been able to work with the entrepreneurs to improve the technology they are using in uh, cutting timber. We now have what we call the, the narrow band saws, which uh, have uh, quite high recovery to the tune of 60% and also uh, safer for operators. They also uh, consume less power. And, uh, and so the, the, the industry has really, really improved and quite a number of improvements are still coming. We have also introduced what we call uh, timber grading. This has, uh, is very useful in the construction and the export market for timber to, to be able to, to sieve out, remove timber that is defective and uh, avail uh, quality timber for whatever use, whether it's in construction or it's in furniture, grading is very, very uh, useful. Um, next slide, uh, just a few challenges, uh, particularly of moisture, because this is this one area which affects particularly our furniture makers. Moisture, how do you deal with it? You want to reduce moisture, you increase the strength, uh, you know, it also affects adhesion and the finishing if you are working with the, an, an, an dried timber. You are also increasing the possibility of distortion in storage. If you look at those two pictures, the one up there is timber that is just thrown. Anyhow, if somebody buys timber, stores in their store, it keeps on warping. We, we encourage that uh, even when you buy timber, even if it is dried, you can arrange it like uh, you know the picture below there so that throughout you can maintain your timber in high quality. It also keeps on using uh, the excess moisture. And by the time you utilize it, you are utilizing a good timber. The next slide, I want to talk about, as I, as I now uh, go towards finishing, to talk about the incubation program, the inter intervention towards industrialization. After doing all the research in uh, forest products, we realized that uh, our information is not reaching those people who are supposed to be reached. We looked at the large scale industry. These are people who have the money to buy technology out there, and even to bring in people who can train their workers. But we have uh, the middle and the small scale people who may not be able to afford that kind of arrangement. So, uh, Carefully having been um, so research and development, uh, we decided to venture into integrating technology in business uh, space to map out the road towards Kenya being a better uh, investment uh, space. And how are we doing this? We looked at um, the whole spectrum of forestry uh, research and what it can contribute to business uh, endeavor in this country. And we looked at uh, incubation in two areas. One, we have developed what we call the forestry, commercial forestry and incubation center. This particularly will deal with those who want to invest in forestry. Forestry as a business. We want to grow trees. We have moved to develop uh, programs which can help you to be trained in seed handling, uh, seedling production that is nursery management so that you get quality seedlings to plant a quality plantation or a quality forest. It also deals with now taking care of your forest until you get a mature uh, wood that can go into business. You can either sell or you can process for own use. And then number two, we have the forest products 
uh, incubation and innovation and incubation uh, program that is uh, based is being based at uh, Kefri Karura, and we are expanding it. We want now to get to all the regions, at least to mimic uh, what is happening in, in Karura, so that people do not have to move from their regions all the way to Nairobi. What are we doing in uh, this uh, program? As I've mentioned earlier, we want to take uh, investors through the entire spectrum of forest products development, um, technology adoption, technology uh, optimization, and, uh, and looking at an understanding of the material, the raw material that one is using to make uh, whatever products that they want to make. And so um, the major areas will be technologies and the forest and the products development, standardization, and the protocols. These are all areas that we have really done we have developed quite a number of our products, particularly in the non-timber area. We are talking about alloy products, fruit, I mean, forest-based fruit uh, products, uh, medicinal, you know, plants and so forth and so on. Uh, we have developed a number of uh, products, including uh, pest control products, which are basically from, uh, you know, forest materials. And these are things that we want now to take uh, in uh, interested entrepreneurs through so that they can be able now to begin making products. Remember, our mandate as a research institution is not to go into business, but to develop these technologies and pass them on to those who are interested in business so that they can invest. Saying there is need for forest product sector to regain the loss in value addition uh, chains. If you look at uh, quite a number of uh, forest products value chains, you find so many gaps, and uh, some of the gaps are not going to be solved in uh, conferences and uh, meetings. They have to be solved in practice. Uh, this means, of course, we need to focus on technology transfer and technological training um, so that we bring in competitive operations. Now, to do that, uh, next slide, we are looking at the status of forest products and the challenges, pres uh, present opportunities in forest products and technology development. And here, we want to focus on timber and non-timber. Uh, when we talk about timber and timber products, we are talking about primary and processing. Primary okay. processing, basically the saw milling. Secondary, where you have now the end of viewers, the timber, I mean, the furniture manufacturers. Well, that, so but we do not know how to see your first thread near. Is somebody, somebody talking on the background? Please, Mary, don't. Uh, okay. We also have uh, bamboo, which is a new material in the market. And here we are looking at uh, the use of full calm and a reconstitution. A number of uh, interested entrepreneurs have already come up and we are working with them to actually venture into this area. Uh, there is a company that is now coming in to start a reconstitution of bamboo in this country. I think uh, they have already set up, they have already built, they brought in machinery, and uh, soon they are, they are beginning to operate uh, somewhere around uh, Narok. We're also looking at uh, composites. Now that we are saying that Kenya shortage of wood, we want to venture into wood and agricultural residues. Generally, what is left in the forest when uh, we harvest our wood, what are agricultural residues when they harvest their crops, things like the maize stalks, the rice uh, residues, and so forth and so on so that we can use that to make uh, composites. And the composites here, we are talking about wood, uh, what we call fiber and other things like uh, fiber and cement uh, composites, fiber and plastic composites. These will help us in uh, uh, reducing the amount of wood that is needed. And of course, that will uh, help us to reduce the deficit 
that we are already suffering as a country. The area of bioenergy resources, the fuel resources, this country, 80% of our population depend on uh, fuel coming from biomass resources. And uh, this is an area where we need to really look at the technologies that are used to process these resources so that we can be able to uh, help our entrepreneurs to produce uh, enough of what they want. And then finally, we have the non-timber forest products. I've talked about this. There, there is a whole range of products and we are seeing a lot of interest of uh, entrepreneurs, particularly small women groups, uh, youth groups coming in to produce things like cosmetics, uh, cosmetic uh, products uh, based on uh, natural uh, materials. So what opportunities do we have? Uh, the next slide. We have opportunities in production. We can easily move into this, not even um, going into other processing. This country lacks a uh, timber Right. Think is a affordable project and doors. Housing, manufacturing, and domestic making is that is. Let's look at is in to sell and in can say to product uh, we are talking about products uh, that is in uh, a minute you mean Um, I want to talk about opportunities in uh, composite uh, and engineered uh, wood products. If you give me the next slide from uh, the bamboo one. Kindly, next slide. Um, I, I thought it's moving. Um, let me see. No, it, it isn't moving. There's a go, a yes, go below that. No, let me, I think there's a problem. Let me just reshare. Let me just reshare again. Okay. okay. Tell me if you can see it. Yes, I can see it. Yes, go now to the next slide. Very good. Now, we have, uh, remember, we are talking about opportunities in forest products. And here we are talking about opportunities in uh, composites and engineered uh, forest products. And I've given a whole range of uh, what uh, one would be looking at to invest in. 
beginning with the plywood, that's a common product. F uh, fiber boards, common product. Particle boards, common in this country. Oriented uh, strand boards, not very common, but uh, still being produced. There's a lot of opportunities there. Laminated uh, uh, veneer products, that's what we call the LVL. This is uh, fairly new in this country, and it's, a, it's an area that uh, is becoming important uh, you know, in construction. Similarly, with the glue laminated uh, timber, that is glue lamps, uh, again, uh, cross laminated timber. This, the left three, are very, very, um, they are, there is a lot of opportunities there. Uh, not very many people have, um, have invested in this. And this is where timber is going. Timber products are going there because of the efficiency of processing and the, the, the diversity of, uh, of use. So an, an entrepreneur would want to look at this. Technologies are available worldwide. They can be simplified to, to fit uh, what is needed in your case. The next slide gives us opportunities in biomass energy. There is a lot. We are talking about biomass uh, research program under which we are looking at processing of biomass energy products. These are opportunities that now entrepreneurs, uh, entrepreneurs can go into. We also have biomass energy processing technologies. Uh, now, when we talk about uh, biomass energy products, we are talking about charcoal, we are talking about briquettes, we are talking about uh, you know biochar. You can one can invest in uh, the technologies to process that. And one can also invest in technologies to use the end products. Now, here we are talking about uh, uh, cook stoves, gas fires, and so forth. And so I have given a few uh, photos there just to show what is Kefri is coming up with and, uh, and, uh, and are now working with the stakeholders who are, are beginning to, to invest in this. There, there is a lot of uh, opportunity there. The next one is opportunities in a com uh, composite, or rather not composite, sorry for that, is non-timber forest products. Non-timber, the next slide. Uh, that composite is replaced with the non-timber. Sorry for that uh, mix-up. Here we are talking about uh, things like alloy products. We are talking about gums and resins, forest fruits, honey and honey products, dyes and tannins, and the forest fiber products. There's a lot of um, opportunities, particularly in the drylands, uh, where these products are found. And we are beginning to see, uh, particularly women groups coming in. And then more also, we are also seeing uh, other people, other investors getting into this. And it's an area that we encourage many more to come in because a lot can be, can be done. The last thing I want to talk about is the need for collaboration with the stakeholders. And uh, here we are saying we are not yet to where we want to be. We need to make collaborations with uh, people in technology development, technology developers. We have done the research. We have uh, brought, brought in, uh, you know, the, 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 the simplified technologies who can develop these technologies for, the, for our people. We need continuous upgrading of uh, processing technologies. We need introduction of ICT-aided design and processing. We need issues of optimization and adoption of new technologies. And uh, quite a number, uh, you know, are there, but, uh, I, I, you know, uh, from where we sit, we, we still need more people to go into that. Then, of course, we have the entrepreneurs themselves, the starters. We need business inventors, and we need uh, technology promoters and marketers. And uh, to crown it all, we need to enter into our education fraternity and uh, look at what can be introduced in terms of new technologies in training systems. We have our events. What are they training? Are we still training the carpentry of uh, 1980s and 70s? What, what, what is it that we can bring new? And therefore, how can we enter 
together with our stakeholders into training curriculum development so that uh, we can shape the direction of this country in terms of uh, what the, 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 the government agenda uh, is on uh, creation of uh, employment through what we have as our natural uh, resources. So having said that, I want to stop my, my talk at that and just invite uh, any uh, questions that could be there so that we can uh, maybe uh, go ahead and uh, react to, the, to them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. George, um, for that uh, very comprehensive uh, presentation. Um, I think the nature of uh, this conversation is to be as practical as possible. And I think the, the question that I received from different stakeholders, maybe even the, the ones who are here can uh, attest to that, is how can we practically uh, link entrepreneurs currently with the many opportunities that are there within forest products? Like you mentioned, uh, either you want to go to the counties as well as having an incubation program at, at the headquarters. What practical steps do we need to do um, uh, for us to, to be able to bring cohort of entrepreneurs there? Is it free? Is it charged? Of course, a lot of SMEs don't have money. So, I mean, if it's a charge, then it becomes a problem. So I think as a way forward uh, for, for, for me is what, what then can we do to ensure that we are able to uh, have our entrepreneurs both within Nairobi as well as other counties to take advantage of these opportunities and bring these products to market. I think for me, that's that's the, the general outcome that maybe I would want you to address. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Victor. Uh, I want to say this, that uh, as I've explained in my presentation, technologies have been developed, they are there. You have said it rightly, and uh, our stakeholders are saying it rightly, that yes, we have all this information possibly in our in our labs. How is it getting to our people out there? And that is where we, my last uh, uh, slide, the need for collaboration with the stakeholders comes in. Um, when you have information developed by researchers. You know, the funny thing with the, us researchers is, we know how to develop, we know how to publish. We publish uh, you know, journal papers, we publish uh, manuals, we, uh, all this. But then we need people. Remember, most of our researchers are not trained as marketers. So we, we, we need people to come in and pick this information and take it to the people who are, who are to use it. Our venture into incubation is trying to bring that gap. But remember, these also take a lot of resources. Mm -hmm. And looking at our, our economy as a country, I can tell you for sure that our research allocations, particularly from, uh, from, uh, from the exchequer, is very, very minimal. We majorly depend on um, you know, donor funds, which are sometimes not also coming in. Mm. And so we are also calling uh, the, 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 the entrepreneurs to consider partnering with us. I've been to uh, countries where uh, entrepreneurs actually uh, come together and identify a problem and they partner with either university or a research organization and say, we are funding this so that it can be investigated and we get a solution. This country, Kenya, I don't think we have gotten into that seriously. Mm. And this is a call that I would want to make that uh, it is high time that as a business fraternity uh, begins to partner with the government and particularly the research organizations because research organizations we have the know-how, we have the expertise. You can imagine Kenya Forest Research Institute alone has over 40 PhD holders. How are we utilizing that? I can tell you no university in this country has that number of concentration of PhDs in one particular area. How are we utilizing this, uh, this knowledge? Because we can keep on boasting that as a country, we have uh, this uh, whole range of uh, knowledge but how are we utilizing it? So 
there is need for that uh, collaboration. Number two, as an institute, we have endeavored now to diverse, diversify our knowledge base to the regions. Mm. But that's also still reaching very few, very few people. Next week, we are beginning what we call the, the, the regional um, research advisory committee meetings. These are meetings where we invite our stakeholders to tell us what challenges they are facing and what we can address. But still, we address based on the amount of resources that we have. So that collaboration is needed. Then um, uh, the other one is we need to begin looking at uh, working on specific programs and the problems and the challenges. I'm happy with what the government has come up with, the KIPES. That is solving a number of, I hope, it's solving a number of problems in the agricultural sector. In Nairobi, I, happen, I and you happen to be in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the Nairobi KIPES uh, program where we are looking at furniture and so forth and so on. I hope it is, it's picking up. And uh, if it does, bringing in what we call common use facilities is the way to go in a developing country like Kenya. So with, with that kind of combination, I want to believe that we can reach more people. But more importantly, those who want to go into business in some of these areas, they can come. Uh, approach any of our centers countrywide. And that's why I brought uh, where we are. Uh, they will be helped to, to see, uh, to, I mean, to, to begin a discussion on how we can uh, stage either a free training or a paid training, depending on the, you know, the requirements and the period of time, uh, so that uh, we can cost share and uh, develop something that somebody can invest in. I think that's what I would want to say in that that uh, that area. Thank you very much, Dr. George. Um, I think maybe due to the interest of time, I think we try to put it within an hour so that at least we can be able to get that information. And for sure, the idea is for us to be able to uh, find ways of practically unlocking this IP and all these uh, opportunities for entrepreneurs. I think we will be able to reach out to, to Kefri uh, to see uh, uh, based on the list of products that are already there, even without uh, doing research for new products, is for the for the opportunities that are already there in medicine, in bamboo, in composite, the ones that you've already researched and uh, they seem to be there. How can we be able to um, link them with entrepreneurs to bring them to market? I think for me that would be the biggest outcome that probably we can be able to pursue uh, in the next uh, couple of months. Um, again, uh, just to thank you for for uh, making the time to uh, make the presentation and thank you for everyone who has attended. Um, I think we have uh, recorded this particular session. We are going to, say, uh, to share it uh, publicly. And again, we can be, you can be able to reach out to us uh, for, uh, for, 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 uh, for feedback and possibly how to better uh, engage with Kefri as well as other public research institutions in terms of being able to unlock opportunities uh, for, for, uh, for our SMEs, for our startups, to, to be able to uh, make uh, economic uh, you know, uh, opportunities for themselves. So thank you very much and have uh, yourselves a good day. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Victor.